الله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد الرسول رب العالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We continue by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings in this series on the استقامة of the hearts استقامة القلوب the straightforwardness of the hearts the steadfastness of the of the hearts the persistence of the hearts on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we said we talked about the heart and the importance of the heart and last time we talked about the soldiers of the heart from Imam al-Ghazali's Ihya he radiallahu anhu mentions the soldiers of the heart. And he mentioned that there are apparent or external soldiers and internal soldiers. The external soldiers are the senses that we have. Our sight, our hands, our feet, our legs, our hearing, these are external soldiers of the heart. And the, there are internal ones. There's Jund uh, al-Ghadab, the anger, and al-Shahwa, the desire. Those soldiers, you can either use them for your benefit or they might lead you to your destruction. And Imam al-Ghazali in, in, in his book, Ihya Ulum al-Din, which is the main book we're, we're depending on in this series. From the name of the book, you know the purpose. He called it Ihya Ulum al-Din, the revival of the sciences of the religion. Why? Because in his time he found that people, similar to our times, they're doing only the acts of worship like by image, just by appearance. You see people praying, but they don't know the reality of prayer. They make wudu, they don't know the reality of wudu. Right? They make dhikr, they don't know the reality of dhikr, the spirit of dhikr. And this is why if you look at the Muslim world in general now, you find that even though we are more than 1.5 billion Muslims, but you find that we are weak, that we're being humiliated among the other, by the other nations, right? You find the Muslim countries like at the, in the back of the list, right? At the end of the list, right? Why? Is not Islam the greatest thing? Is not Islam strength? Is not Islam something that has no match, right? This means we are not practicing Islam in its reality. We're not following Islam in its correct form. We need to revive Islam in our hearts. This is what Imam Ghazali wrote about. Now he's gonna talk about the entrances of shaitan to the heart. The doors of shaitan to our hearts. How shaitan enters our hearts. He's in, in this, you know, Imam al-Ghazali radiallahu anhu, he divided this book, which is his masterpiece, into four quarters. The first one, the first quarter, he called it the quarter of ibadat, the acts of worship the rituals, how to pray, how to fast, how to make wudu, etc. The second one, he called it Rubah al-Adat, the quarter of customs or habits, how to eat, how to drink, how to travel, how to live, etc. And the third one, he called it the quarter of the destructors or the destroyers, right? The destroyers, what are the things that destroy you so that you avoid them? And this is the quarter we're talking about in which he talks about the heart the soul the ego the self the desires how to break those desires mean how to means how to control them the diseases of the tongue and the diseases of the tongue we spent we took a whole series almost 30 or 40 lectures in the past by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings in the old masjid and some of them here we talked about those diseases of the heart. Then he, he talks about uh, anger and hatred and envy and miserliness, stinginess, 
pride, jealousy, all of those, all of those uh, diseases of the heart. Then he talks about Rub' al Munjiyat, the quarter of the savers, the things that saves you. And in, 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 that, in every quarter, he mentions many chapters. So in this one, which is the quarter of the savers, if you like, he starts with Tawbah, chapter on Tawbah. Then Sabr and Shukr, patience and gratitude to Allah. Khawf and Raja, fear and hope. Tawheed and Tawakkul, reliance and dependence and trust in Allah. Then al mahabba love and shawq and uns and rida and satisfaction and ikhlas and muraqaba and muhasaba bringing yourself to account all of those those important chapters if allah wills we can go over them inshallah after we finish with this with this one so last time we talked about the soldiers of the heart now we're gonna go to the doors of shaitan to our hearts how shaitan enters to our hearts Imam Al-Ghazali is saying, radiyallahu anhu, know that the example of the heart is like a castle and the shaitan is your enemy. The heart is like a castle and shaitan is the enemy. What will the shaitan try to do? He's going to try to enter that castle. Shaitan wants to enter your heart. As our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the authentic hadith, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Shaytan Wadi'un Khatmahu Ala Qalbi Ibn Adam. That Shaytan is putting like his nose or his face on the heart of the child of Adam. It means like he's waiting. He's getting ready and just to attack you. Then the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fa'idha Dakar Allah Khanas. When you remember Allah, Shaitan will run away. وَإِذَا غَفِلْ If you're in heedlessness of Allah, if you're not in, in a state of remembrance of Allah, إِلْتَقَمَ قَلْبَهُ He'll have your heart. He'll take your heart. So Shaitan, excuse me, is the enemy. How do you enter the castle? There must be doors, right? There must be doors from which you enter the castle. What are those doors? Imam al-Ghazali is saying, you have as a Muslim to know those doors because you're required to protect your heart from shaitan, right? You are as a Muslim required to protect your heart from shaitan. And he's saying, مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ It's wajib to protect yourself from shaitan. This means you're, it's wajib on you. It's mandatory on you to know the ways of shaitan towards your heart, those doors of shaitan, so that you can close those doors. You can avoid those things that will make shaitan enter your heart. Now he starts listing some of the most important, important ones, some of the most important uh, doors of shaitan to, to our hearts. But before that, uh, let me give you another hadith as an introduction from our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about dhikr and how dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a, the greatest castle for you from shaitan. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad. He says, وَآمُرُكُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ كَثِيرًا He's narrating this from Sayyidina Yahya or Sayyidina Isa. They were giving this advice to their people and he gave it to us as well, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is he saying? وَآمُرُكُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ كَثِيرًا I command you to remember Allah abundantly. He's saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this advice is in the Quran in many ayat. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amalu dhkuru Allah dhikran kathira. O you who believe, remember Allah abundantly. Wadhaakirin Allah kathiran wadhaakirat. Faidha qudiyat salah on Friday. Faidha qudiyat salatu. Fantashiru fil ardi. Wabtahu min fadlillahi. Wadhkuru Allah kathira. 
There is nothing in the Quran in which Allah tells us to do kathira means abundantly and a lot except for dhikr. Because dhikr is the spirit of all of the acts of worship. If your salah doesn't have dhikr, then it is just a body without a soul. So he's saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I command you to remember Allah abundantly. And he's saying the example of that is like someone who's being chased by the enemies. Then he found a fortified castle and he took refuge in that castle. And the servant of Allah, he'll be most fortified from shaitan when he's in a state of dhikr, when he is involved in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the dhakiri. Now he starts and he's you now gonna tell us some of the some of those doors of shaitan. فَمِنْ أَبْوَابِهِ الْعَظِيمَةِ الْغَضَبُ وَالشَّهْوَةِ He starts with one of the most common ones, which is anger and desire. And he's saying, فَإِنَّ الْغَضَبَ هُوَ غَوْلُ الْعَقْلِ غَضَب or anger is like the alcohol for the mind. When, means when the anger controls your mind, it will not function normally. Right? When someone gets angry, what happens? Most likely he will behave in a wrong way, right? He will be behave in a wrong way. So he's saying, when the soldiers, فَإِذَا ضَعُفَ جُنْدُ الْعَقْلِ هَجَمَ جُنْدُ الشَّيْطَانِ When the soldiers of the mind are weak, then the soldiers of shaitan will attack. And, and look at this very, very nice phrase he's here. He's saying, وَمَهْمَا غَضِبَ الْإِنسَانُ لَعِبَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِهِ كَمَا يَلْعَبُ الصَّبِيُّ بِالْكُرَى when the, a person gets angry, shaitan will play with him just like the kids play with the ball. How the kids play with the ball? With the ball, they shoot it right and left. This is how they kick it right and left. This is how shaitan plays with you when you get angry. This is why you find many Muslims. I divorced my wife. Why? Wallah, I was angry. I hit my uh, child. I broke this. I did this. Why? Well, I was angry. I was angry. This is the very... Now, of course, Imam Ghazali later, as I mentioned to you, in the coming sections, he has a whole section on anger, a whole section on hatred, a whole section on jealousy, a whole section on dispraising the, the, the worldly uh, engagement in the worldly life. Uh, means to control, means that the worldly life control your heart uh, about miserliness, about pride, about he's gonna mention these in details. Now he's giving you like a general introduction about how shaitan enters to your heart. So that is the the first the first one, and he mentions a tradition. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he met Iblis. And Iblis told Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Oh Musa, you are the one that has been chosen by Allah. Allah talked to you and I am one of the creatures of Allah and I made a sin, but I want to repent. Iblis is telling him, I want to repent. This might not be authentic, but the meaning is, is correct. The meaning is fine. So he said, I want to repent. Please intercede for me with your Lord. So that he will accept my repentance. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah told him, did not any person or anyone give you uh, or ask you for something? He said, yes. He said, yes, oh Allah, Iblis. So he, t he said, go to him and tell him, I will forgive him. Just let him go to the grave of Sayyidina, of, uh, the grave of Adam. And let him make one sajda for the grave of Adam. Why Iblis was cursed? Because he rejected just to do one sajda to Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. So Allah is telling him now, just go and make one sajda to his grave. Sayyidina Musa, he went and he told Iblis, Allah is telling you, he will forgive you. Just go and do sajda, one sajda to the grave of Adam. He said, what? 
When he was alive, I did not make sujood. Now you want me to make a sujood for him when he's, a, when he's dead? So he, again, he showed his arrogance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, Allah knew that he will reject and he will not do it. But the point is, Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam, when he fulfilled that request for Iblis, Iblis gave him a piece of advice. He said, beware of me in three things. You know, Shaytan sometimes he says something true, right? You know the hadith of Sayyidina Abu Huraira when he, when Shaytan came to him, stole some date, right? Then he told him, Ayatul Kursi is, uh, makes me run away, etc. And then the Prophet told him what, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him, he was true, but he's a liar. Means he told you something right, but be careful, he's a liar. So he told him, be careful. Remember me when I remember me when I when when you get angry. Because فَإِنَّ الْوَحِيِّ فِي قَلْبِكَ وَعَيْنِي فِي عَيْنِكَ وَأَجْرِي مِنْكَ مَجْرَ الْدَمْ. So beware when you get angry. I'm gonna take over you. And he's saying when the human, when the a person gets angry, I will blow in him. Means whisper to him, then he will not know what to do. And also re- beware of me, and the when the, when the the rose or when people ma- meet in the battlefield. Why? Because I'm gonna come to him, to the person, and remind him about his wife and his children until he runs away and leave the battle. Which is one of the major sins. And he says, and beware to sit with a woman who is not a mahram to you. If any woman, any girl that you can marry, she's not a mahram to you. Right? Any woman or girl, any girl that you can get married to, she's not a mahram to you. So you cannot be by yourselves in seclusion. And you cannot sit with her without a necessity. And even if there is necessity, there has to be other people. You cannot be in seclusion by yourself, right? So he says, and if you do, because if you do that, فَإِنِّي رَسُولُهَا إِلَيْكُ وَرَسُولُكَ إِلَيْهَا Then I'm going to be the messenger between you and her. And I'll keep whispering until I'll make you fall. So in this, Shaytan is, is mentioning that when anger controls on the person, Shaytan will play with him. And will control him, so we have to be very careful. And our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us the guidance. I will not gonna go now into details how to get rid of everyone because he's gonna explain them later. But we know when you get angry, what do you do? What did our beloved taught us? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, change your position. If you're standing, sit down. You're sitting, lie down. And go make wudu. And say A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. He gave us the guide, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the that is the first one. The second one he's saying also from the, the doors of shaitan to our hearts is Hirs Hirs is this desire to, to have everything Right? To get everything That when you are eager to get things Then this eagerness will make you blind Will make you blind and will make you deaf means you're not gonna listen to anything you're just gonna get it no matter what as mentioned in the hadith narrated by Imam Abu Dawood when you love something you'll become like blind and deaf whatever people like advise you whatever people warn you you love it you want to get it no matter what and by the way this is also when some of the youth they love some girls before they get married. Then they say, we want to get married. So they get into a relationship with, a boy gets into a relationship with a girl and vice versa. Then they say, oh, we have loved, we love each other. Then what happens? He will not see her flaws and she will not see his. Because now they're in a state of love. He will not see any flaw from her. But when they get married and he starts 
living the real life as a wife and husband, now the flaws will appear and will, will come out and he will find, no, I did not know you like this. And she would say, I did not know you like this. And that will cause the problems. This is why love, the true love, comes after marriage, not before marriage. The pure love, the halal love, comes after marriage, not before marriage. Before marriage, and we have now a marriage course, a course on marriage in, in Kerry Masjid. We have three more lectures left. Tomorrow is the third last lecture, inshallah, at 7.30 p.m. We talked about how to choose, we're talking about how, uh, about the importance of marriage and how to choose your spouse and how to, to have the relations and to solve the problems, etc., etc., and the motives for marriage, all these details about marriage. So you, you have to uh, know how to choose before you get married. Then if you choose right, there are 10 qualities you have to find in your spouse. Before you get married, you have to find to, does my uh, does the person that I want to get married to does he have these characteristics or no? Then you get married. Then Allah will put the love between you. So hirs or eagerness to get things is is also one of the doors of shaitan. Why? Because shaitan will will just make you blind. You will not listen. You're gonna take, even go halal, haram, you, you don't care. You just want to get it. You see, this is one of the doors of shaitan. When he makes you, when he enters from this door into your heart, that you want this thing, then you don't care. You commit mistakes, you commit sins, you just want to get it. So that is, that is one of the, of the doors of shaitan. Then Imam al-Ghazali anhu continues, and he says, وَمِنْ أَبْوَابِهِ الْعَظِيمَ Now we come to Ramadan. وَمِنْ أَبْوَابِهِ الْعَظِيمَةِ الشِّبَعُ مِنَ الطَّعَامِ To have full stomach. Even if it's pure and halal. That's a fact. And this is why Allah prescribed fasting for us. So that we train ourselves, reduce the food. Basically why? Because the food strengthens your shahwa. The desire of the belly. And the, and the sexual desire, the food and the drink, they strengthen the sexual desire and the, the belly desire, right? And this strengthens your, your uh, shahwa, your desires, your lust. Food strengthens it. This is why fasting comes to train you to control both the sexual desire and the stomach desire, right? Fasting is to control these two desires, right or no? So he's saying, even if it's halal, why? Because, full, do we say fulfillment, shiba? Fulfillment or being full strengthens the desires. And the desires are the weapons of shaitan. The desires are the weapons of shaitan. When you are full, that will make you lazy to do the acts of worship. Right or no? Especially in Ramadan. <laughs> Many Muslims, they misuse Ramadan. They lose the benefit of Ramadan. They fast all day. Then when it is iftar time, they eat like to compensate for all what they missed during the day. So they have the full stomach. Keep drinking, drinking now. Ugh, I cannot pray. Yalla, taraweeh is not an obligation, akhi. Let's stay on. <laughs> right? This is what happens. So, it makes you lazy to do the acts of worship. Right? It, Imam al-Ghazali is mentioning that some of the, of the scholars mentioned that six, six, this braised traits or effects of being full with food. It will not, it will remove the fear of Allah from your heart. The softness of your heart. The heart will become hard, will get hard. Mercy towards others will be reduced. You know why? Because you're full, you're not going to fear for others. 
and Ramadan you control your food and you stop eating from dawn to uh, dusk right to sunset one of the benefits is you feel for those who are poor and needy so that you you help them fulfillment will make you lose that will not you will not forget you will not remember about them generally speaking right also it will make you lazy to do the acts of worship it will not make you get the, the be affected by and influenced by the words of wisdom and when you speak yourself your words will not affect in the hearts of others and and finally it will irritate or it will it will cause diseases many of our diseases because of the food the excessive food right and this is why many times the solution is what they give you what himya right right they tell you you only eat potato boiled potato particularly right not fried bo boiled potato right with some common common right so they give you a diet right don't eat this, don't eat this, don't, don't eat anything fried, don't eat anything, etc. Right? So, and our beloved taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the very, in the authentic and miraculous hadith, the miraculous hadith, when he said, بِحَسْبِ بْنِ آدَمَ لُقَيْمَاتٍ يُقِمْنَ صُلْبَةً it's enough and sufficient for the child of Adam some bites of food with which he can stand tall. Just some bites, some bites of food that you can function by. Then he said, فَإِن كَانَ لَا بُدَّ فَاعِلًا If you, if you insist and you want to eat more, more than what you need, what, what he says, what did he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then, فَثُلُثٌ لِطَعَامِهِ Then keep third of your stomach for your food. وَثُلُثٌ لِشَرَابِهِ And third for your drink. وَثُلُثٌ لِنَفَسِهِ And third for your breath. Third for your breath. And this hadith, if you go and search, you will find some scientists, they found a miracle, a scientific miracle, in this amazing hadith of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The point is, moderation. Moderation. Sunnah is to get up from the table while still you desire to eat more. That's the sunnah. Like eat two bites less. This is train yourself, control yourself. Like, Two bites less, one bite less. Train yourself bit by bit until you have that control. That is why Ramadan. Ramadan is a great school. وَمِنْ أَبْوَابِهِ And also from its doors is حُبُّ التَّزَيُّنِ مِنَ الْأَثَافِ وَالثِّيَابِ والدار. That to love, to have the decoration of furniture and clothes, etc., etc. Because once shaitan see you having this uh, love for these things, <laughs> he will even lay his eggs in your heart. He's saying, فَلَا يَزَالُ يَدْعُوهُ He'll keep inviting you to decorate more and to get more and more and more and enslave you all of your life in this, in this way. And then he, he's going to leave you. You know, he's saying shaitan will leave you then. Why? Because خلاص, you're, you fell in the trap. You're going to keep chasing those decorations and appearances. الناس means you have this desire just to make people happy. This is one of the doors of shaitan. You just want to make people happy. Shaitan enters from this door. And this is very important. Then shaitan starts because he want, he enters from this door. You're loving, you love to make people happy. You want to make people happy. So he starts making you flatter people, right? Praise them in things that they don't really have, right? 
So you become as if you're worshipping those people because you only want to please them. And sometimes you do what? You do haram stuff to please them. You lie to please them. Sometimes you stab your brother in the back to please them. Sometimes you hurt your Muslim brothers to please others. That's not permissible. That's of the ways of shaitan. Right? That's of the ways of shaitan. You harm your Muslim brother to please non-Muslims. Or even a Muslim. You harm a Muslim to please another Muslim. That is bad. But to hurt, to hurt a Muslim and distort the picture of a Muslim, to please a non-Muslim, that is even worse. Right? Inna lillahi wa inna rajim. This is of the doors of Shaitan Fishi. Okay. So that is, that is another, another very serious door of Shaitan that when you have this tendency just to please people, then you will try to do things that do not please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only to please them. That is something shaitan will make use of. I'm going to finish with one so that we, we comment on Sha'ban before we go, uh, which is what? Uh, the door of envy and hatred. Envy and hatred. You envy people, and this is, we mentioned many times, and we're going to mention in details later, that shaitan... Because he envied Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, he fell, right? How I am created from fire and he's created from mud and I want, uh, you want me to prostrate to him, right? And how Allah taught him everything and he taught him the names of everything and I, I prostrate to him, so he envied him. And then he rejected to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he was cursed. Same thing, Cain and Abel, the children of Sayyidina Adam. Why he killed his brother? Because he envied him. Why he got the beautiful uh, sister? I should get it. So he killed him because of envy. So shaitan, you see, he will lead you to big sins out of this door, which is what? Envy and hatred. Because envy, if it's not treated, it develops into hatred. And this hatred develops into what? You try to kill them. You try to harm them physically. Right? This hatred is something that will deprive you of Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness. Especially in this month. This month, the month of Sha'ban, is the month in which our annual report of deeds will be submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows all of our deeds, even before we do them. But Allah, through His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa taught us that the reports of our deeds are submitted to Allah. Allah alayhi wa why you fast on, on, uh, in Sha'ban? Almost He fast all of it, except for a little. So He fast most of Sha'ban. They said, why Ya Rasulullah? He said, my, the deeds are submitted to Allah in this month, and I love that when my deeds are submitted to Allah, I'm in a state of siyam, I'm fasting. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept me and bless me. In the, on Mondays and Thursdays, a weekly report is submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Rasulullah says in the authentic hadith, Nabi Allah, Imam Muslim. Every Monday and Thursday, the deeds of the week, the reports of the deeds of the week are submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Rasulullah, what does he do on Mondays and Thursdays? He's fasting. Sallallahu alayhi wa And he says that the deeds are submitted to Allah every, in every week in these two days. And it will be said or it will be forgiven. Forgiveness will be given for every believer except for someone who has hatred towards his brother. And it will be said to them, it will be said to the angels, wait for these until they reconcile. Wait for these until they reconcile. So they don't have the forgiveness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and, uh, to reconcile our relations with each other. This is in, in the weekly report. In the mid of Sha'ban, the night of mid Sha'ban, which will be Monday night, inshallah. 
Rasulullah said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith that Allah looks at his servants in the night of mid Shaban and he forgives them except for a mushrik or a mushahin a polytheist, someone who is associating partners with Allah or and someone who has hatred in his heart towards others so Hatred will deprive you, of the, deprive you of the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to get rid of that hatred. And, and w- even if someone wrongs you, many people wrong us. Many people do wrong to us, do injustice to us. We hate their action. We don't have hatred towards them in our heart. And the greatest thing is to pray for them. Right? That's the greatest thing. If you complain to a judge or to someone to reconcile, you have the right. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. Allah does not love to speak about those who oppressed you or wronged you, as He's saying in the Quran. But if you forgive, that is greater. And this is depends on the interest. Sometimes you have to complain to to certain people. If you don't complain, that will be more harm for the community. But sometime there will be no harm. So it's better to forgive. The point is, in all cases, no hatred in our hearts towards any person. The hatred should be only to the action itself, not to the person. This is what the Quran teaches us. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. So the night of Mid-Sha'ban, inshallah, try. The, the more, most important thing in this night more important than coming to the masjid and praying and reading the Quran, more important than that is to purify your heart from any hatred. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the forgiveness. And if you add to that some prayers and some dhikr, that will be great and excellent. That is, that is how to prepare ourselves for Ramadan. This is how controlling our desires, dhikr, uh, purifying our hearts, so that you enter Ramadan with a peace of mind. So subhanAllah, look at the connection between mid Shaban and Ramadan. Huh? Why this particularly hatred? Why now? Allah wants you to enter Ramadan with a, a heart that is clean and pure and focused on ibadah. If you have problems with others, you keep thinking. You keep confused. You keep, right? keep thinking about the problem. But when you don't have this, you enter Ramadan with a peace of mind and tranquility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to achieve that. Try to fast some days before the 15th of Sha'ban. After the 15th of Sha'ban, you should not fast unless you had a habit of fasting as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. And try to uh, make use of, of that blessed night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to this speech and follow its best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless for us what is remaining of Sha'ban and enable us to reach Ramadan and worship him in Ramadan. Allahumma salli wa sallam mubarak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, we meet you after Ramadan inshaAllah to continue in this in this uh, great series uh, by Imam al-Ghazali radiallahu anhu. Jazakum Allah khair.